Hi everyone, welcome back into the studio. Well, you know, I asked you guys, I said, you know, put up a little poll on the uh, community page and said, what would you like to see next? A landscape, a floral, a seascape, western, wildlife, and the landscape won uh, by over the floor by just a little bit and then the seascape. So I'm going to paint all of those this week and we'll film all of them and we'll try to get them all up in the next couple of weeks. But today is the landscape for this weekend, okay? So what I have, and you can see it over there, is I have a, uh, a photo that I got from Adobe Stock. I really like it. I might put a little snow and I might increase the height of this second mountain right over here to put a little snow on it. I'm going to use it for just inspiration. I'm going to show you some pull down reflections and ripples into the water. We'll paint some snow into the sky, some of those trees. This is a uh, looks like a late afternoon to heading into fall kind of a scene here with this lake and it's going to be really nice because it has a real gradual lake shore that that uh, moves into the grasses and stuff. And so it'll be kind of fun. Then we have some 3D shapes up front, some rocks and stuff. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. Let's get into it. So the board I have here is prepped with the canvas prep medium. This is a quarter inch uh, wood panel, which I like to paint on it. You could also, one with this amount of interest, you can do a uh, canvas, a stretch canvas really well, uh, you know, with no problem. This is 24 by 18. This is a standard one. Some of you were asking for some more standard size is easier for you we'll do that as well okay so it'll fit a standard frame and uh, off we go okay so my colors that I have out here this is the standard uh, Dave's favorite YouTube um, uh, palette that we use and I'll list all of the colors everything that I use are down in the video description this is the extender medium which I'll use into some thinner areas which I like and this is the uh, the Derivan Open Medium right here, which uh, Derivan Matisse uh, makes our our paint formula for us. So all of the, the acrylics that I use, the Jansen Art acrylics, are made over in Sydney, Australia for us by the Derivan company. So, And we make sure that our formulas and stuff work together so you can use all of their products inside all of our products uh, really well. And they're more worldwide than what we are, but... Um, because we're a smaller family, and but we have a lot of fun. All right, let's get into some of this. Now, the first thing I'm going to do, and you see me do this before, is I like to take a little bit of burnt sienna, some water, and in a little dirty brush here, obviously. And uh, I'm going to put on uh, about of a, a, what I call her, a third uh, horizon line. So I'll look for an area, like maybe right along in here, and it's just, that line right there is just up above halfway kind of and then there's another one you could kind of draw up a third of the way so I'm going to go up maybe just past halfway right in here and I'm just going to set a line a horizontal line that works with my board here and this will help me keep my landscape in uh, you know in per, uh, perspective I call these perspective lines linear perspective lines and uh, I like to use them to uh, to keep my my scape uh, here just kind of level all the way across. And it's all gonna cover up and disappear anyway. But it's gonna be just an idea of that line. So so when I go to do the hill and I look up and I'm gonna do this little hill that's gonna come right back down here like this. And I want this hilltop right in here. I'm gonna open that up a little bit more maybe, right? It's a little bit further across than halfway. So the hilltop will be right up over here. Up over here, we'll have some of these trees, which I really like. Let's just mix up a little bit more of this. This is just to give myself some ideas, some lines. Sometimes you see me do this with darks and stuff, but uh, just ideas. Now, I'm gonna drop this, this line down around like this. It's gonna come back in here. I'm gonna open up the shoreline here just a bit more but I do want to leave some nice room here for some reflections and I I want an undulating shoreline here maybe coming all the way back up over there that'll be fine but I want to have some room here to really develop some shadows on the hills and stuff like that and stepping back this will you know when you you take something or you do something like this, you step back, get up and step back. Now, what I'm looking at is I have a big monitor, which you know, I have three big monitors right here that show me what some of our cameras are doing. 
and I can look at this and that's the, what the painting looks like at eight feet. So I don't have to get up and and get back. But when I'm painting at the easel, painting for myself or plain air painting, you get up, you get back, okay? So you can see what it looks like. Now, we'll leave a bit of a room for a sky here and we'll just push this angle down of this whole hill right up over here. I love this. It's really rocky and craggy and and stuff right there, so we'll put that in. Now, what I was thinking was this had some, you know, other undulations, some other stuff going on. It's not smooth by any matter of means. And uh, what I, when thinking here is, you know, into the distance, of course, a larger mountain will be pushed further back, but maybe creating, and I don't really want to line it up right with this one. Maybe we'll raise this one a bit more but right about here and make this one further atmospheric, further back. I like to give, in interest paintings, I like to do just more than one mountain. I like to do a series, a couple of them. We'll put that back over here before I get in trouble. And a series of them, so it gives more depth, more interest. And, you know, if you're a selling artist like I am, you know, you, you try to get interest into your painting. So let's just put a double little mountain right there. And this one will go up, we'll get rid of some of our sky right here. And uh, we'll push this one up right about like that. That'll be, that'll be nice. So this one comes down another little rocky, craggy area there. Maybe another little one right there. And that'll work. And then, of course, we'll have all kinds of rocks and fun things out over in here. Coming around this, we'll push this angle here probably and I know in the photo it goes up pretty severe but we'll push this up maybe take this lake over that way just a bit good so that gives me an idea right all right so and you've seen me now start out all different kinds of ways I'm going to take a one inch brush here and I'm going to use just some water you might use a little extender Anytime that I want to do thin, and I want to do thin is I'm working in the back of the painting. We want to do thin, struct, and then work thicker paint up towards the front because the amount of paint you use helps generate interest. So we're going to want to have, and I brought, I printed off an extra one of my photos here, and it's really light. It's just like a value 10. Um, but we want this really light violet here. And so I'm going to mix up kind of a violet over here. And because it's going to be so light, let's get a little more violet into that. So this is quinacridone violet and thalo blue. And then we'll take a bit of that over here with quite a bit of white in it. Okay. As, as you can see, boy, that is a real light color with that. Now, you've got to remember that acrylics dry about a value darker. So we want to have it pretty light right along here. So... Let's push some of that right into here, and I'll take it right down into my mountain here as well. You can have a little bit of extender into that, but I, you know, we're not going to have as much sky as what you see up there because I want it mostly about this lake and stuff down here. So I'm pushing, I'm pushing my mountains and stuff a little higher. So we'll go into a little more color here and right out like this. And I like to use, like I've told you before, I like to use little X motions and stuff. This adds a lot of atmosphere to the sky. Let's push back in some light back up in there. I like atmospheric. I like movement into the skies. And so I use a lot of uh, real soft X motion brush movements and stuff like that to get that. So we'll push this in here just like that. Nice paint. We could put in a tiny touch of more blue and violet here and not quite as dark but maybe just a bit of the violet as an atmospheric little touch right through here just run it right through when and make sure that horizon line though especially like right down here now in the photo of course it goes way deep back here because you, you know, the we don't have this mountain, but we're going to have this mountain here. And to help push that mountain back, I'm going to add a little extender, and I'm just going to lightly go over this mountain, maybe over some of the edges here on that one there. What this is going to do, I see the mountain, make sure you can see your mountain, okay, here, but that's going to help push this back. 
as I work into it. Now, we have the value and stuff here of a back mountain. You can see it, you know, right here. And um, I'll do something similar to that. I want it grayer. Let's go to a little bit smaller brush. Maybe my 8 or a 10. This is a 10. So we'll go a little bit of blue and a little bit of grayness to it by adding the burnt sienna here. Okay. And that's just such a pretty color. A little extender in it. I want to keep this soft. And let's go up here and start in and see what that's going to be. That could be a little bit grayer, which means I could add a bit more of my violets, a tiny bit of that burnt sienna in there to help gray that out here. And uh, let's just push that in. That That's kind of nice. And so what I'll do is the light in this painting is coming from back behind this way. And if it's back coming forward this way, you can tell by the big shadow, which I love, which is right up here, right? So the light's coming way back there. And so we want to, uh, when we're looking at this mountain, everything to the right will be lit up and everything to the left will be... Uh, shadowed okay so we'll keep that in mind but this is a nice soft we're just gonna push back this little this mountain edge here blur that into some of the background let some of that blur into that so that's what's going to give you the distance as it works into that sky color that's where the distance is going to come see way back there and then we'll come in maybe a little bit more burnt umber or excuse me uh burnt sienna a little blue and burnt sienna i love the grays that come out of that so we'll mix up some of these grays we'll lighten this up vary this up a bit and so shadows come to the right side so let's just work a bit of this color in imagine like little ridge lines and stuff and you're coming back and uh, everything is pulling slightly from that left side there. So sh shadows coming to the left. You could put in maybe just a touch more of that blue and violet. So I'll play into the blue and violet as well, which is the atmospheric color, see? So we'll push some of that in. So, And this is, you know, when you're painting mountains like this, see all these different colors I start to get? As, it, as they're kind of modeling together with that wet paint. That's what I want. But it's thin, but it, you know, it's wet. And, it's, and into here, it's working into that pretty well, into that wet sky color. So we'll add just a bit over here, just like that. Now, I want to have like the impression of snow, so I'll go back to my violets here, maybe a little bit of light. And I'm just going to add a little bit and you can see how I changed my brush. Yeah, I like to, I love to paint with the fusions, holding it flat like this and dragging. It's, you know, I'm going to paint that other mountain with the knife, but the the painting knife might have too much interest for what I want to do here on this particular one. So, uh too much interest to bring it forward. So I use the softness of the brush, but I use the uh angle of the brush here by setting it down by the ferrule. I'm using more of the width of the brush, and this is why I love the Fusion brushes. They're soft brushes for doing this. We made them to do these types of techniques here. And so you can see I can get a quite a bit of interest later, you know, you know, further down there. Now, I can bring that mountain, the foreground of this mountain, a little closer by bringing in just a little more shadowy color. And maybe just a touch, let's just grab a little bit of the warmth of that burnt sienna right in there, here. And so you'll see, like, maybe it's heading into a less of a, a valley. And what I'm doing, see, I'm keeping it soft here, and I'm going to pull your interest right into here by putting in just a little more color, just a little bit. And that will pull the viewer's eye, hopefully. <laughs> No, it does. It does. We're going to work on, we work on contrast edges. You know, you see me say that all the time, right? Contrast and edges. So I'll put in some more contrast right in here. Maybe a little bit more of a slope 
right in here and see what happens by, and what is it doing? It's putting in a bit more edge detail, a bit more color detail, and it's pulling this part of the mountain forward. Now I'll just let this whisper in and head to that back, back through there like it creates a little disappearing valley back through there. And so the rule is, guys, as you're putting something on here, uh, it, as objects recede, that's the rule of art. As objects recede, they become more like the background. That's the rule of art that applies to everything. It applies to, to setups, still lifes, whether you're painting fruit, flowers, whatever. As objects recede from a focal point, what your focal point is, they become more like the background. So the colors become more like the background here, which is the sky. They become more like the sky. That's how you get depth. Now, how do I set this one right up here in front of this one? Is that I'll take some of that color, maybe just a bit more of it, not quite as atmospheric, and we're gonna have to balance this. I'm gonna use some extender, cause still a little bit thin, and I'm gonna push this ridge line. Now see, that's a little dark. I'm gonna go ahead and do it, uh, but that's a little dark. And then we're gonna push this other hill right here up in front of it. It's a little dark, but look at how that really in, that really comes up in front of that one, see? So I'm gonna lighten some of this up right in here. We'll lighten this up. And there, pull back here, light coming from the left side there. So a little bit lighter, and I'm hitting kind of that gray that gray that we're seeing right in there, kind of close to it. I'm a little bit, I'm just not quite violet enough. So I'll take a little bit more violet here, a little bit more of the violet color, and a little bit of light to it, and a little bit of extender, just so it stays wet for a moment. And I'll work that into that color, soften it down. Now I'm not gonna take away all of that other color. I'm a big advocate for if you have it already there, use it and you're gonna change it. Just go ahead and use it, use that color. Now, let's lighten that up. Maybe warm it, a, warm it. A, a good thing is as you lighten, you warm. That's a good rule. So let's lighten and warm just a bit here. Pull down some of that other little bits of that hillside there. We'll lighten and warm little bits here. And then, now, I can go a little bit deeper. Let's go a little darker gray, blue, gray, violet, blue, um, some violet, and some burnt sienna. Let's just deepen some of these hills here, little angles of that. And I like, you know, just tapping that around and creating some architectural interest in those hills, some... And you know, those that photo shows lots of little things happening that makes it pretty darn rugged, right? And uh, now this is probably gonna dry darker and I might have to come back and touch a little bit more color, but it's a good place to start. And I'm always a big advocate for putting more. But the big thing is here that that is darker than what that is right here. And let's just finish off that little valley right there. Finish that off. And this is a little bit too straight of a line, so let's just add a little bump of a hillside there for a minute, right in there. And that's what I like. See, you just kind of, I'm working, my eyes are focused in here, and later on they'll be down in here and I'll get interest to the, the whole scape. But right now I'm watching just my edges. So those are my edges. Do I need to soften that out ever so that brings that little hill forward, you know, or, or what? What do I need to do to do that? Let's put just a touch maybe of light right here. Now, I can't get too light because I'll, I'll bring it, I'll push it back because I'm taking it more like the background, right? So I'll push it back to that back mountain. So it's a balance. It's a balancing act. Okay, so that little hillside sits there. Let's drop some more in right up here. Let's just take some of this and some of this light and let's get some more mountain, mountain shapes back up here, right up like that, right into that one. Push this back, okay? And I'll be there all day with that, so I'm gonna go back to my larger brush 
big paint here and let's get some big paint on right now and just put in the, the idea of the shape this and so what I end up doing is I model color mul you know multiple colors multiple times and that's what gives me the interest that I want to give to a mountain so I put some of that on let's mix up some shadow blue excuse me burnt sienna and blue and sometimes I might touch into a little green and red which will give me a another little variation over here I love the grays that come out of green and red as well but here's some nice colors for that that mountain in the photo is a little more blue a little bit more blue violet so and it's very much so right up over here so let's put some of that in and we'll soften some of that out but see I'll just push the brush like this see and you'll see me use the knife as well I love to use the knife too I, this the interest from multiple tools I love to use a knife and say okay well I'm gonna I'm gonna come over here and maybe make another little ridge line right in here and pull down on the side and you know the first mountains that I ever made was years ago back in the 1970s I was in high school and I, I painted every afternoon with Bill Alexander on PBS and he would use his palette knife and create these mountains and stuff you know and I just love that he's he's on YouTube still he passed away years ago but he's still there painting away and uh, firing the color in the mountains and just fun stuff like so let's come back up here maybe put an edge of that one blur that in right there right like that okay and uh, put some other marks see I love the marks the edges marks that you can make with the knife that works as well just as just as nice we'll take some warmer some yellow some burnt sienna some whites here and this is a warmer gray let's just add it to this grace don't mix it up real well so you can see it's not mixed up super well here and let's pull some of this back this way here and we can leave more of these edges and stuff like that which makes this mountain a little bit uh, harsher let's put in some that top is a little bit more uh, warm gray so a little more yellow this this edge this sliding hill that we want to put in here is a little bit warmer gray so let's and I'll tap if I feel like my mark is too much you need this angle that creates the slope see how I pull down like that and that creates the idea of a slope so I need that slope but I don't always need that slope to be too long. Does that make sense? So I will pull down, stop, maybe tap my knife a little bit. And what I try to do, this little stutter adds interest, but yet the overall look is still the slope. Does that make sense? So that's what I try to do with that. And let's put just a bit of that up here. That slope comes back down like that see I can use my finger it's one of the things I like to do if you're painting in oils don't use your hands but the acrylics are non-toxic so I don't have to worry about it and I can just use my hands to come in here and soften but you don't have a tremendous amount of softening in this particular mountain now let's just grab some of this other dark maybe with the brush we'll come back up over here and add some shadows here let's go to my smaller one again I like to vary the tools sometimes to get some different looks but let's add in some other little marks here like this that adds in some other shapes to our mountain here okay and uh, you could put that big dark right in there I mean that's you know that's up to you we can go a little bit more burnt sienna, a little more blue. Blues, violets, burnt siennas, those are those real darks. You know, a lot of violet because that's your sky, right? This is a real dark color, dangerous color kind of. And so we'll probably pull it through a bit. But I like to do stuff like that. And then I like to work it in with my brush, in which just takes some of that, you know, the 
the uh, knife leaves all of these stutter marks in there, which is great because it looks like little edges of the mountain and little valleys, that kind of stuff, you know, roughness of the mountain. And then I can co come in and break that up. We'll take a, just a touch of warmth right here. And let's just break that up right here with like the idea of this other little peak or this other little light and a little valley kind of thing happening here. So, and it's light and shadow. So light on the right, shadow on the left. And I create the looks of those little, you know, edges and valleys into this mountain back here. And uh, more like a, it's a small mountain. It's not a big mountain. I mean, just a couple hours away are the Rocky Mountains. Those are big mountains from us here. <laughs> Those are big mountains. So these, this is a smaller one. But So we'll push some of that, you know, right up there like that. That's nice. Uh, some of the warmth maybe right here. Cut that edge here. We'll see just the edge of breaking that off there. Maybe a little more light to this particular edge right here. Pull this down. See, I can create that slope. Any idea of a slope there, which starts to smooth out the mountain. And, you know, you're gonna look and see how much interest you wanna give, but I can come back the other way and create little edges for it. Take a little bit of your dark, create some other little marks and edges and you know, how much you want to do on to your mountain, you can. Okay. Here. And I think I will not go too far with this one here. We'll put a bit more light right up there. So is this one that back there is a little bit more atmospheric. This one is stepping into more colors of the landscape, which is going to bring it, you know, further forward. And we can start looking to some of the marks and shapes of the landscape so that I want to bring in. So I want to bring in some more light, uh, like a yellow, maybe a yellow and a little bit of green here. Uh, and bring in, and I'll hold this brush kind of flat here. Bring in some more shapes of these angles for that hill that's coming in right in here on that side. Matter of fact, and you can see that, see it's got a big side hill here. And again, I'm not copying it, I'm using it for inspiration. But, uh, you know, it's a big slope right in there. So maybe I wanna, and I'm gonna read this and then I'm gonna adjust it to what works in my final landscape. So some of this might change, but I'll stutter a bit here. You know, maybe just walk that right up that edge there, which is, that works kind of nice. Um, some of these edges, little bits might come up, just taps right up in here to give some of the feel of that slope up in other areas too, back there. But I like that, I do like that slope that's right there, so I want to preserve some of that coming down. And see, I like to hold the brush flat because it doesn't give me like a, a, if I go like this, I get a solid mark because I'm using the tip of the brush and that's what the brush does. See how it eliminates it? But if I hold it flat, let me put a little more yellows in there. Okay, and if I hold it flat, then the ferrule and the brush are doing some stuff and it doesn't make a smooth mark. It makes it a little bit more streaky. And that's what we designed this brush to do. So I can get some of those nice streaks. Now, if I want to have a smoother mark that comes down, maybe I want to have it a little smoother down through here. See, I use the tip of the brush here. Here, just like that. But if I want to break it up, which is what I like to do, I use more of the flat of the brush. And I do that in florals and everything I paint. Let's grab some of that right down in here. Just let some of that, maybe some of it comes the other way as a, a little bit of a shadow. So you don't have to have that solid mark all the way. You can push a little shadow here. Maybe a little shadow of a valley there, right in there as well. So, But you can see, you can take it any way you want. And that's what I love about painting these things. 
you know you're you're designing your mountain you know you're you're painting it designing it what do you want your mountain to do here let's put just a touch maybe of that dark back there right in there see and it's just all interest you're deciding on that interest now as we come up forward here we're going to have a real what we call core dark and that core dark is going to come right back up in here it's going to be really dark right up in here but it's going to be right in here and so i'm going to start this out with like a two or a three putting in some of that dark and then i want to get up here and i want to paint this hill i want to you can see it's a lighter hill i want to though change it of course it's me i change everything but and that's what gets your creativity guys going don't get so f laser focused in on the painting even if those of you that are members i will put a finished photo of um this on the community page but don't just get laser focused on mine even though you may really like it don't you know do yours but look at what i'm doing for the interest the colors the contrast the brush movements and stuff and let what happens happens here because if you try to copy it becomes very stiff that's why i won't copy a photo i'll do it you'll see some of the lessons on this channel where i do it and i show you mark for mark how to make a copy of something but that makes you too stiff as an artist. And I like to be more relaxed, which means I don't always copy, okay? So I'm going to leave that, and I'm going to get this core darker shadow. It's got to be darker than here. So I might end up, uh, let's just take a little extender and some of this color, just a little bit of light, and lightly wash over this, kind of drag over that, just to lighten that shadow there just a bit so it's not quite as dark and then let's go in here burnt sienna blue a little green a little red a little violet let's make a darker darker blue violet dirty gray to blue violet okay and let's get brave and let's just drop this core dark right in there and you can see how it's going to come forward right and that might be too much what i'm going to do is just take some water here and i'm just going to wash this out wash this out thinly a little bit let some of that just so i'm reducing the impact of the solid color i'm just going to wash it out a bit and let's just grab some of this dark up in here I love scrubbing with my brushes. Just scrub around, put in verticals and horizontal marks. Let's put some of that dark in. And then look at how it's pushed everything further back. There's going to be a nice big dark. Let's get a little more violet. Cast shadow dark. Kind of uh, from this tree. A little water. And it's going to come right back up in here. Okay, so that's going to be right in there. Just That's just the foundation of it. It needs to be a little more gray. So a little more burnt sienna in it, which will help gray it. And then even darker, let's just go ahead and put some of that in right in here. It's Some of you might be bothered by it. You, uh, this amount of dark this soon into the painting up here. And uh, so if you're bothered by it, you don't have to do it. I'm going to do it. And... Uh, because I know where it's going to go, but we'll push this. And so it is optically, it's hard to look at for a while as I get some of these other colors in there. But that's really, I want real dark, heavy, thick paint up here. This is the forward cast shadow right up in this area. So I really want it to come forward. I'm going to take a little green and a little red and a little blue into that push in some other colors and I'll work this all in and to the end but you'll see what that is and that's hard to look at but sometimes I do that because it, it what you're doing here more than anything else guys is you're creating a value scale and the one that you have to worry about is not this front one it's this one and those back there so these have to become more like the sky but as long as this is darker than that I'll be okay now you can have some of that dark back there. It can happen, depends on the day, position of the light and everything. So you can have some of that, but uh, you know, it's, it's best to kind of 
plan your painting is like almost like a value scale. Okay, so let's get back up here. Let's grab some of our yellow oxide and white. This is kind of what I'm envisioning right up here. And right up on the top of this hill, I'm going to push that yellow oxide and white right up here. That's this hill that's right here. And I want a bit of textured paint in there. I want some more yellow, maybe a little burnt sienna, maybe a little darulite, maybe a touch of red. Don't model that up too much. Just kind of tap it around. Some of that comes in here. I'm going to pull some of that down here. Nice warm color here. And you can see on that photo, it plays pretty well with it, real modeled up. The light's hitting it. I'm going to put in some thick paint here. Let that light hit that hill there and maybe break that just a bit. Pull down. But see how thick that paint is that I'm working on top of that. And then we'll have some burnt sienna, maybe a little blue, a little darulite. I love burnt sienna and darulite for back edges, back objects. And uh, we'll just tap in some of those like back trees and stuff like that that are happening there. And push around some yellows into those. Pull down just a bit. You can soften some of that with your with your brush but I want to so those are like trees and stuff happening in there way back there okay and uh, you can take a smaller brush here's a smaller little filbert I can come in there and work that a bit tap some some more softer verticals so it looks more like a tree impressionists wouldn't do it you know but we can and then I like to take that hill color and just paint up right by it and put that slope in. I like that slope, but I want to leave some of that modeling for those, that hill and stuff there. That's pretty good. Now, let's take some Darulite. I have the Darulite. Darulite is a softer yellow, semi-transparent, so it works really well for a lot of these tapping type techniques and back trees and stuff like that. Let's take a bit of this dark, just drop it right into here, a bit of that red so it doesn't get too green on us. There we go, some burnt sienna, a little bit of blue. And I don't want to mix this up real well, okay? And I want to work this right up into this area here. Very impressionistic. This is an impressionistic way to do it. And put in the ideas of what you'll see is some of these darks and some of these dark trees and stuff like that here. And uh, leave a little space, maybe put in a bit more right there, right? And you can, I mean, if you're more precise, if you like more of a precision look to it, you can take like the edge of a filbert and work that in. I like the impressionistic look for it. It's where I'm really trying to go as an artist is more and more impressionism. So I'll do a little bit of this, but I won't do a lot. Maybe shape up some of these trees. Uh, uh, and I shape them up. What I'm thinking when I'm shaping these up is I'm thinking of small verticals, taps and verticals, which will give it the look of the tree. The angle gives it the look of the hill. Does that make sense? And then the vertical gives it the look of the tree. Maybe I'll just pull this down a bit down here and give that brushwork for that angle of that hillside there just a bit, okay? And, uh, yeah, and sometimes I'll take the knife and just kind of smoosh it around in there like that to create the looks of those trees and stuff there. And I like that. I love this Darulite in the knife right now with some of these colors. It works so well. So that's a pretty color. There, there we go. So you see it's like a hill and you can take some of these colors here, push them lightly way back up in here, make it look like there's some distant trees back up here, push it into the color, but leave some of those little ridgy marks like that, see? 
ridgy marks. Is that a word? <laughs> you leave some of those ridgy marks. So I'm going to add a little extender to this, lighten this up a bit, uh, model this around so I can push it around up in there a bit. And uh, you don't see this on the photo, but I like that. Just see, it adds that color. And so it's like as you're coming down off the hill, you're picking up some of these other colors. Does that make sense? It's a lot better than I think. It's a lot better than uh, what you have over there sometimes. Because that's a nice photo, but it's not a painting. That's what I always tell my, my students. It's a nice photo, but it's not a painting. The artist will take some of that and take some of, of nature a little bit and alter it into a little bit different setting. But see how it's coming forward? And see now lots of paint right in here, guys, that's bringing that forward. It's working, okay? So let's make the uh, ground up here. So I'm going to rinse that dark out of this real quick. We'll come right back up here. Just grab some of this color here. And let's just toss this in right here because the tree is going to cover up most of it. Got a little couple of, I'm going to trim off that off of this board. So a couple of bad marks on it, chips. But uh, we'll take a little bit of green, some of this and our burnt sienna and reds here. We'll add some colors through here. This is the, the tree will play up against this, so we don't want to have too much, uh, we don't want to have too much of a, um, you know, paint or something like that, thickness of the paint and stuff on there. But we can take a little more Darylite, a little more Burnt Sienna, some of this color right in here, and add a little bit fading out here. Maybe a little bit fading out. This is just gives the impressions of other little trees. Maybe a little bit of our cooler violets coming down along here as I'm heading towards the base and the shadow. The tree will play up against that. Okay, here we go. Sometimes I'll just paint it all the way through and put the tree up in front, but sometimes you get really busy that way so this is kind of a safe way to do it let's take a little burnt sienna a little blue and on the photo here we see some heavy shadowing and stuff down here so let's just add a bit more and see i'll knife that so it stays really i get highs and lows I just push my knife into some of that. Drag it lightly, lightly touch it. Let what happens, happens. Yours will not be the same as mine, but yours will look good if you leave it alone, if you don't try to do too much to it, see? And let's take some of this blue, violet, burnt sienna, a little green. Come over here, right up over here where we're gonna have some of these trees right along there. And let's push some of that in there. Okay, there'll be some trees all along in there. And that'll work, right? And right up in here, let those shadows and everything all come together. Sometimes I just like to use a paper towel and just pull through. And then that's a whole area I can build the trees on. So you're looking all the way through there like that, see? Now there's another, and I forgot this one, so let's get both our yellows and some of this light, another little light hill back up over here, pulling forward here, right in there like that. And maybe just take our paper towel and pull down just a bit and need a new one. So we'll pull this down here. There we go. Just like that. So another little hill that's right there. There's a tree and stuff coming up there. A little bit of shadow, a little bit of shadow work on this side of it here. You know, maybe give that touch of an angle. Let's get a bit of burnt sienna in that warmer. Don't always like those super cool colors. A little warmer there. 
just like that so you get that hill the look of that hill let's pile on just a bit more paint here and pull down at that angle so we'll give that slope to that let's give a little bit more see it's just a bead of paint and I'll set the angle and then I'll rotate it down till I touch that paint and I'll pull and there we go that gives just a bit let's get rid of this little blurry line by making another little angle to our hill there there we go that's good I like that color and you know me I always tell you once you have that color move it through the painting so let's just move it through in a couple of this areas other areas right in here just like we know what we're doing here we go okay so that's bringing that further forward there okay so we have these tree lines that we're going to do right up here which is beautiful to do the trees you can use a brush you've seen me use a brush those of you that painted the landscape class with me i showed you some ways to do detailed dutch trees really beautiful um ways and you know there's all different kinds of ways i'm going to use the knife i think mostly here to, and what we'll do is I'm going to put on a greenish kind of a mid-tone. Not mix it up real well here. Greenish type of a mid-tone here. And this is an impressionistic way to do that. And so I'm, going to, I'm looking at the trees right now that are going to be back there for light and dark. And uh, I'm going to take soften this edge out here just a bit. Take a little water right with your knife. And see how I can push. So I take, you can blend the heritage for several hours. And so that's, even though that's dry, I take a little water in my knife. I call this burnishing. And you can push with your knife and see how I can soften out that edge of those colors there. So I've reconstituted it, see? And so I put that and just soften some of that color there so these trees can come up in front of it. It's edges, right? And so the trees, if they have a little bit more of an edge to them, they'll come forward. And so if you notice that something like, I might have to adjust this in here. I'm going to try not to. But, uh, you know, if you need some more, then you need to um, soften some of that back sometimes. So let's come right in through here and just scrape through like this and that just puts on the edges of your trees here right and now you could use your brush too and sometimes i'll use a brush to do both um let's come in here with like my filbert my number 10 filbert let's take a little green a little blue a little violet this is a nice core dark here a little blue maybe too much let's go a little red Okay, and let's tap in some of the shadow sides to those trees. So light's coming in from the left, shadow goes to the right. Does that make sense? Strike that. Light's coming in from the right, <laughs> shadow coming from the left. Yeah, that was the previous painting. <laughs> so, and I'll just tap this around and I imagine the volume of the tree and the shadows. Mostly up onto the, to the uh, left is the shadow here. Maybe a few little edges of a tree here. There we go. Yeah, just like that. And I can turn around and touch a bit of this with uh, my brush to hit some more ideas of trees. Uh, the of the leaves maybe a little yellow and light modeled into that with a bit of green here and you want to use this smaller these are little lights so you want to use this smaller let's get a little brighter yellow into that just to say we did it here there we go just a little bit more light just see, I just tap and roll and use the edge of my brush here. I love the soft fusion brushes because I can drag it lightly over to create a little stumbling or push it around a bit, you know. Uh, it just works so well. Let's go back down. A little burnt sienna, a little yellow, a little green. This is my medium tone in here and take out just a few of those lights. 
and maybe add some of this over here to create a little more roundness to some objects. So you have a light, a mid-tone, and a shadow happening through there, right? That's what we want. Let's build some of this back up. Let's take this. Now, you can also start adding the open medium. We're going to use it specifically in the water in just a minute. But let's go to a medium tone here first. You can go shadow. I usually like to go shadow and then mid-tone and light or shadow and light and mid-tone. But I change it up every once in a while. Let's go a little bit more shadow. And we'll push this larger tree right here. Some edges. See, I just used the tip of the brush here. Rotate that around. Create these edges here. And soften them out. Blur them. Pull them. Blur them out. And that causes the receding edge. Let's just take this all the way here off the edge. Okay, this big tree. A couple of them, actually. Right in there like that. Okay, now let's get some of that deeper shadow. A little green and blue and some of our violet. Let's put in some shadows. Thinking left side here. Left side, right? And drag some of this through, some of this. So you could also warm that up slightly and drag some not quite as dark or heavy shadows here onto the right side, more of that mid-tone. Larger trees, more interest in the painting, can carry more tones. Does that make sense? Now, let's get some of our yellows right up here. Nice yellows. Let's work some of these up into the, the light on the right side here. And sometimes if that starts to blend too much, it's right on the edge for me. I'll, I'll let it dry a few minutes. I'll let it dry just a few minutes and then I'll come back. So a little bit more here onto this. Now, as I come around this corner, let's do something fun. Let's take our yellow oxide and our yellow and drop it down in value just a little bit. So you still perceive a bit of a light, but it's more in shadow, see? Still more in shadow. And we'll build like that photo is, not copying it, but getting closer to that photo is. A little green here, right up on the top up here, right up into the front here, right up there, and uh, Maybe some more yellow. Maybe hold my brush a little. And I also, I do love to use my knife on this. Sometimes when it's a knife painting and I lightly scrape over it here. And that just, and you're just letting the, the, the knife just barely contact the surface here. And that just puts on a super casual light there on that tree. Do you see that? Maybe head up over here a bit. That's the light side of the tree. Just maybe one or two little branches here hit the, the light up over here. Just like that. So it makes a kind of pretty little tree there. And <clears throat> let's go, before we get too wild and crazy here, let's take this lighter color and let's push it in a line right back through here because it's coming through that tree, see? We'll push that in, right in there like that. Like there's a little back, there's light coming through some of that area, through the shadows back there. You're picking it up, a little hillside back there. And maybe a little more yellow oxide right over here. I love yellow oxides in the paintings. They're natural earth colors. Maybe even pull down like a little bit of a slope there with that. Now. Let's take some of our dark and we'll push kind of the shadows of those tree trunks in. Right.
right here down and maybe a, another little idea of one or something back here and uh, right back here like this some of this ideas of some back there and then we'll come forward again let's get our burnt sienna and blue love that color nice shadow we'll drop that in right up here pull some of that through and then all this wet color see you just kind of smear it around and it'll make the ideas of all those shadows and stuff there see and Sometimes I'll use this open medium if I really want the it to slide want the paint to be a little thicker but slide over the surface, see? It just slides really easy. We're going to use that open medium in just a minute for the water and you'll see but that just slides. Let's get some of that yellow oxide and white, some of these greens. This nice color here. And let's just pull that right along the edge of the water here, okay? And just, it's this modeling, and if you learn how to leave some of these colors modeled like this, you'll get, model means they're not real mixed up. You try not to work this knife too many times, because you'll mix up all those colors, so try not to do it too many times. We want to leave those streaks. Sometimes you can come back with a little bit different color this is a little burnt sienna and green and just hit those edges there like that there's a just a touch of a cast shadow pushing out here like this from that area so we'll drop that in yeah i like how that worked uh, some of this casting shadow up here slides right down into that yellow so let's just Grab some of this open medium. I'm not using it for wetness. I'm using it to slide my colors along the surface here so that I'll impart just that soft little shadow in there, see? And the hardest thing, guys, the hardest thing of anything in, in painting, and especially those of you that are, you know, maybe a little bit past beginner now, you're getting into some intermediate, start getting confidence. The hardest thing is to put something on like that and to leave it. Because we all, and I did for years, we all come back and we play with it. And then that smooths it all out. And what are you going to do with that, right? I mean, you got to learn to just put it on and move on. That's what I started to do with Impressionism, was learning how to do that. And my paintings just took off. So see, I'm going to take a little bit of this, little bit of light paint that's in here, and I'm just going to tap it like this, right around, along there. And see what that does, is it creates highs and lows into their little, what I call the sparks of life in a landscape. And it just adds so much interest. But for so many years, I would paint over that and keep manipulating and thinking each time I touch it, I'm going to make it better. And I didn't. What I actually did was make it worse. So I had to learn to stop doing that. So I'll leave that little bit of hillside there. There's some, you know, you look at it, there's some nice little touches here of lights and greens and stuff coming into there so we'll just push some color maybe a little i love that when i have that green I, in this time of year i like to add some of that burnt sienna in there just some touches of it see and that just adds a spark of life to that painting let's add just a little spark right over here just a spark of that right in there Right up into that area there. That works pretty good, see? And I can come back, uh, you know, do you do it or not? You could come back and add a little bit more, a few sparks and stuff like that over there if you want. You could add a touch of more light yellow green, maybe up in here a bit. Yeah, let's go just a touch lighter yellow green. Yeah, a little bit of the haunts, a little bit of the light. And that's up to you. That's contrast, right? 
how much you add, little bits of it. It's just little sparks of interest. That might be a little too much. So I'll just push in a little color and take some of it out. But like you can see, it adds a bit to that uh, part of the painting right there, right? Yeah, let's push some of this green right in here. Just break up some of that line right there. That's great. Maybe uh, touch more of a darker shadow touched in there a bit. See, I like this. See, what is all this? What is all that in there? That's just marks of color. And because I've got all this other stuff going on, your eye will turn it into something. If I don't paint it, if I don't paint it too much, trying to make it look like something, it'll be so casual that the viewer's eye will see what they need to see. And that is what Monet said. Now, I didn't always like Monet's paintings, but I loved his technique and his understanding of the human eye and the human psyche about what we're going to see, okay? And so it was just fantastic, you know? So, you know, we can, uh, we can do this. We can do this. Let's take a little bit of this. Let's just grab all of this lovely stuff right here, and let's just push it on right into here right into this area, right in there, right? That's great. We'll pull back some of that texture, a little too much paint right in there. That's great. Let's take some of our yellow, burnt sienna yellows stuff here. Let's just push that right along here as we're coming forward into the scene. Now in the photo, there's a nice harsh line right in there. I'm gonna blur that, those two colors together a bit. There we go. Right in like that, okay. And let's get some of this color uh, right up here into the front. And I might need a little more yellow oxide for sure. Let's just dump some of that right in there. Get that out. And let's <laughs> Let's go grab our big paint scraper. You haven't seen me use this for a while, but this puts on lots of color very quickly and I need to get lots of color up here into the front. Some greens, some reds here. And I just grab this and I push in, you know, I'll, I'll build it here and then I will paint it, if that makes sense. But I will streak it across here. I, it gets a big canvas. I could take a big brush and do this, but you know, what have I said time and time and time again in a painting? What is it that drives interest? Paint, right? The brushes, we tend to use the paint really thin. Paint, uh, scraping knives like this, this is a big paint scraper. This is a way. Well, it is a Warner, you can hardly read it, but it is a Warner uh, paint scraper. Uh, and I love it for, I do see large paintings with it all the time. It's one of my favorite tools because it puts on a lot of color really quickly. And that's what I look for is that quickness and spontaneity to the color here and a lot of paint. Sometimes I'll leave little spots, but sometimes I'll drag it back like this. And see, I love that little bit of red that came out in there. And turn this over, put some of that burnt sienna in there. Okay, it's gonna it's gonna do the majority of getting getting rid of the white for me really quickly. And I'll use it for the water there in just a minute as well. We'll break up some of this dark here. And I'm almost out here, so that's good. We're running out right here. I'll thin it out just a little bit as I head back here. You know, slide this back. And I can take some water and my bigger brush, and I can start manipulating some of this as well. Right in here, filling in any of the holidays of the edge of the board and stuff here little water, little thin paint, but I can move through, I can add some, 
with my brush. I can add some vertical movements, some edges and stuff there, but it does it really, really quickly. And as I'm doing that, look at what's happening to this scape back here. You know, I'm, it's working here. So let's just, well, we're gonna soften into these edges a bit back here, there, like that. That's gonna work, okay? Now, let's, uh, let's get some of this water on here, okay? And when I put the water on, what I wanna do is also um, uh, work some of the colors of the hills and stuff on there. So I wanna give myself some working time. What if, and if I'm going to work on it, and I, I imagine it's gonna take me about 10, 15 minutes to put this in. Um, and so I don't want to extend it too long because then it'll be wet for too long and I don't like painting wet into wet. I really don't. So I'm going to put on, I'm going to do this. You've seen me do this with other streams and some lakes and sometimes with skies. I put on a light coat of extender first. What this does is this uh, goes into the surface of that, of the uh, canvas prep medium with is leaves the surface slightly matte, matte, so it soaks in just a little bit. I give it just a second to soak in. I'll wipe down some of the excess of it. And then what I like to do, believe it or not, is I take a little bit of the open medium and I paint it over this surface here. This will thicken up the surface, basically, and it's gonna make the surface really slippery and it's gonna, this is gonna dry slower here okay so it's on here and it is super slick and if I feel like it's too thick I like it slightly thick if I feel like it's too slick or too thick in there I'll wipe it down just a bit or add a little bit more extender so you can the two mix together really well so a little more extender into it until I slide this over my hand this slides really easy does that make sense? Now this will stay wet for quite a while. I'll get it right up here. There's none right up in here. Okay, now I'm gonna take some of the sky color and let's just get that. Let's get some blue, some violet, some white. We'll make this light sky color again, right up here. This real light sky color, right up here. And I can add a little open medium to it if I want this to stay wet for a while, but I'm gonna have that sky color right up in here. And that is, uh, that's pretty good. So I can just slide some of that right in here. As I come forward on the water, I want to, and you can see how this slides. See how that slides really easy? You know, so it, it works, it really does. Um, I can have it a little thicker as I come forward here, but I want it right up in there. And there's gonna be a little bit of my water, believe it or not, a little darker, but we're gonna put a little bit of that water right up in here. So let's just leave some of that right up here. And I'll leave the edges of it a little, um, not smoothed out. You can smooth it out. See, I can just go like this and smooth it really easy. But I liked, because this is going to stay wet for a while, so I don't want to get it, lose too many of my edges there. But uh, we'll just add a little bit into that, right like that, maybe just a touch lighter down here. It emulates the sky, so a little bit of that, maybe just little marks of it in a few other areas. You know, like you see a little bit of it, maybe. Little puddles right out there here. Maybe it rained a bit or the water's receding or something. Just little bits of it. Little bits of this right out here, right in there. I've got lots of time. You see me use this on streams, babbling brooks, that kind of stuff. I have lots of time. now. Let's get a deeper blue, some white, add a little open medium to this, some white, a little bit more of a deeper blue. And again, I can use the knife or I can go maybe take a brush with a little extender in it, pick up this right in here and start to add some of this right in here. Depends on how, what tools you like to use. I Again, in the interest of the painting, 
I like to use a lot of different tools. So this can be a little deeper. So I'll go a little darker, a little more violet here. I don't have to add any more extender. I feel the paint. I can feel the open medium in it and I can feel the extender in it. And I don't think I need any more in there. And that's going to be trial and error stuff for you to learn. You know, as you're painting, you're going to need to learn the feel of the paint. You know, how does the paint feel? And uh, do you feel like you need more in there? That's, uh, that's going to be trial and error. Let's take this and see I can move these together here a bit. Let's just grab some of that and move some of those colors together here. I can take a bigger, softer brush, and this is the brush that I put the extender and stuff on with, and I can just pull through like this, and I can, I love to pull down in water, but I can pull down, and I'm gonna very lightly touch and then pull that across slightly, and start to blur a little bit of that water here, especially as I add more colors, I'll do more things to it, but that gives you an idea there. Now, we'll have some more of this blue right up here, right back up here. Look into the water. Where do you see the blue? The edges of the water back there. Maybe a little bit of light into that. And again, I feel the paint. I can feel the slipperiness of it from the, the uh, uh, extender and the open medium and I don't feel I need any more. I want to go a little bit lighter on that line right back there. Just a little bit lighter. I tap and I love when I paint a lot of water I like to pull down. So that's when you can always take your big brush and you'll see it in a lot of landscape painters they'll pull down slightly to and knife painters will pull down with their knife. But that pull down gives you your, your, uh, your interest in your reflections of it. So let's just paint up along this edge for just a second there. Okay, and then we're gonna pick up some of the other colors in our, in our landscape. So we're gonna have some lights, yellows. Let's put a little bit of blue into that. Some of our lighter yellows. A little burnt sienna modeled in some of that color right over here that's coming from those hills and stuff. And I'll just start plopping in some places some of this color. And you know, you'll see a lot of landscape painters and beautiful landscape painters that will just blob in the colors and then come back and smear them together. So they'll pull down and put in some of the colors that you see into those trees and stuff there. Okay, and this is going to stay wet. Now with a lot of acrylics, without those things that acrylics were drying, you won't be able to do this. Then I show you other techniques. There's lots of techniques all over the channel where I do this with a lot of different things. So, you know, you can, I show you all different kinds of ways to do this. But let's just come right in here and let's add a little bit of our dark in there, okay? There we go. And some of this green and yellow and this dark kind of modeled together here, right up against the edge of that water there, okay? And that'll be good. And some more of this dark and stuff over here. That's going to be good. Some of these lighter yellows, some of these other colors right in here. What's all going on? Some of these light colors coming out of the shadows here. Some of that. Pulling through here just a bit. There like that. Now, what, they, what we tend to do now is I'm going to take this brush. It has a little bit of extender in it. I'm going to get rid of some of the extra paint. I'm going to use it very flat and light, and I'm just going to pull down here. And see, I'll pick up a little bit of some of the other color. I'll go back and clean some of that up. But I want to just pull down here to create some of this reflection 
here of some of these colors going through there like that. And so the pull down causes the length and you can see that up there. You can see the pull down causes the length, right? And then you gotta cause the blur, which is the pull across. This lightly pull across like that, just lightly, ever so lightly pull across like that. Okay, and that creates the, the other parts of it. Then you can come back and you say, ooh, I need a maybe a little more yellow or something right in there if I want to emulate these trees a little better. And you can just lightly pull down here and just pull down and pull across lightly just to give them some of that. I want to blur this this little mark just a bit there. Pull this across, pull that across. Leave some of that down though. That down gives the long length to the reflections there. And pull across there, okay. Yeah, and oh, maybe I need a little bit more dark over here. Maybe uh, I, I see a, maybe a bit of the dark or some of those mountain colors. Well, this is really some of the mountain colors. So we'll go back, get some of the burnt siennas, a little bit of the light here. Get those grays, blues, grays of the mountains here. Let's add some of those colors in there. You know, right along in, and uh, you can take them up into the trees to create that undulating line. See how wet that is? It stays wet for a long time. And I can manipulate this with the big brush. Choom. Okay, some of the mountain color. I can manipulate this with the big brush. I can also do this with a smaller brush in smaller areas here that I might want to uh, push in. Now, you see a couple of places there where I've drugged my line there? That is where I'm, uh, that surface, what happened with that surface is it's a little too slick. So I have on a little bit, and there's a piece of my brush that has paint dried into it, so it's grabbing that. But it's a little too slick. Does that make sense? I added a little bit too much. Uh, of the open medium on the surface. So this will be dry, this will be wet for a few days. So I can I can fix that with uh, my bigger dry brush, which is not anywhere near me right now, but you can take a larger, drier brush and just go right into that and that will fix it. I wonder if this one will do it, this old bristle. Let's see what that'll do. Not quite soft enough. So I either have to stop a minute and go get my big dry brush or use some more techniques here and just grab that. And yeah, and so you go back and forth. So I'll grab a little bit more of this green burnt sienna. Let's push some more of that right in there where I pulled that right up next to that light because it's a little bit too slick. I added just a touch too much open medium. And that's gonna be a trial and error. Usually, you know, if I'm painting uh, water and movement and stuff, I don't have that much problem with it, but that's just a bit much. Now, so I wanna, I wanna get back to that big pull down. So I'll pull down lightly again through there, just like that, okay. So the, the whole thing there is don't add too much. Uh, you want that open medium, but you don't need too much because it'll make it too slick and then it's not sticking to the surface quite as much as I like. So, but we'll pull down, we'll get some of this. And see, I can work it with my knife here back and forth as well. But a big softer brush will take care of that really, really easy. Let me get this one. I do have this one here, which, see the softer brush moves right through there. Dry, a little bit dry. We'll go through that even better. Blur that through. I'll leave just a few of those lights and stuff in there and then blur that through. And you can lift up too. So say you're getting too close to your shoreline, 
you can lift up the other way too, back and forth. Or if your pull downs are getting too far down, everything's getting too far down, you can lift back up and go the other way. I'm gonna push some, and it's gonna take a little bit of practice, but you, as you can see, this is all really wet and it's gonna stay wet for a long time. So you have a lot of time to it. Only thing is, I would probably, it's been a while since I've used that with that extender like that. I mean, excuse me, with the extender and the open medium like that. I use just a touch too much open medium. So reduce that just a bit. Now let's just come back in here and slide in a softer edge to our water here. And uh, push that back. You can see this is all really wet here right so we'll get that nice darker edge you could use your brush but boy I do enjoy painting this kind of stuff with the knife and then just pushing it around right like that makes it look like you know what you're doing here just like that and you can take some of the blues and add a little bit of that in there and you can take the whole thing and smush it all together, or I can take my big brush and just pull them together and pull down a little bit to give that that long shadow to the reflection here. Just like that. That works pretty nice. So you see it goes pretty, it's pretty fun. You know, it's pretty fun. So I got a little bit right in here. Let's just take a bit of that out right in there. A little um, edge of some light, just an edge of some light right there. A little bit more than that, Dave. Try to grab some paint. Helps to paint with paint. There we go, just the edge and see, that'll make that shoreline there. The idea of that shoreline. There we go, right in there, there, maybe a bit of it over here, right up over there, right back in here, a few little rocky lines of it over here, but over here it's, uh, you know, it's kind of blending into the shoreline here. So some yellow, some green, some burnt sienna, a touch of red here. Nice dirty color here. And we'll just, just kind of push back and forth. And you see, sometimes I use my left hand like this. If I feel my composition is getting too rhythmic, I use my other hand. I know that sounds weird, but I've learned that over the years. My left hand paints different than my right hand. And so I use my left hand to soften some of the stuff out rather than my right hand. I'm right-handed, but I can paint with both hands. And I like to do that. I know that sounds strange. Some of you are going, uh-huh, never going to happen. Right? I, yeah, I understand. But I've done that over the years. And, yeah, just, yeah, see, that's pretty. That just works that edge. That's what I'm looking for. That, that edge just softly going in there. And uh, some of this light and yellow. And this edge right out here. Like that. Right into these. You know, now I'll create right up in through here all kinds, and this is going to take me some time, uh, probably about an hour, and uh, you know, or so. I'm going to create some rocks and some grass. I'm going to show you how I do it, and then because I'm going to use a lot of paint, and I'm going to build up. What I want to do is see, I've got some nice paint going on back there, and boy, that shadow is like a little too cold, so I'm going to run a little bit of this warmer burnt sienna and stuff in it. See how it, it's kind of hard. Maybe the camera doesn't pick that up, but it'll warm it. Let's warm this shadow just a bit. 
So it, it doesn't have to be so cold blue to be a shadow. And that will actually see how it advanced it as I did that. And then I start to rub out a little bit until I get it to right where I like it. But let's just run a little bit of the burnt sienna green down into the shadow. You'll still get the feeling of the shadow, but it will not be quite so cold. And then now what I'm going to do is a lot of this, taking some yellow, some light, some mottled color, and you can start working it around here, small little touches here. Um, you can also do small grasses. I like to, I'm going to be sliding it around and pushing it around here like this right up into the front getting lots of yellows right just boom 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 getting lots of yellows here and the greens and the yellows and the greens and taps and every once in a while tapping through some dark colors in there and then uh, like I showed you in the last western and stuff and some of the other ones using um old bristle brushes and stuff and I have this one that I really like and I take and I expand it way out I just pull it out give it a bad hair day like that right and you tap it into some of this and then you can just come in here and just tap along and create like little grasses and stuff like that in there I show that in a lot of my westerns how to do the grasses the prairie grasses and stuff you know so you can just come in and just tap around and create some of those movements and grasses and stuff. When we're doing short grasses and stuff here, so we don't want to do, you know, too long of ones. But we'll get some lights and work some of these in, lights and darks and different things. And then I'll come in and I'll show you the painting of the rocks, the, uh, the rocks. So let me just do one real quick, and then I'll show. Um, we're looking for my little flat. I like to paint the rocks with my flat, which kind of disappeared on me here, somewhere in here. And we'll. Where did you go? Well, I set it someplace, and it disappeared. Is this it? This is it right here fell off to the right side. So what I do with the rocks is we have these kind of grayish rocks. And the grays I like to always make for my blue. I like blue and red, blue and burnt sienna. And uh, you make these grays. These are going to be beautiful gray colors. You need three values. So you need a shadow, a mid-tone, and a light. And the shadow I make more towards the violet stuff here. Right, and we're going to keep them kind of simplistic. You need at least three, and then you can uh, use broken color and stuff like that in them. The light is coming from the right, right? So if I'm going to put, you know, some of the ideas of the rocks and stuff here, I'll push some of my light gray, and maybe I'll make a couple of different rocks here. I like to, I'm a left brain painter, so sometimes I'm just too rhythmic. And then what I like to do is I'll go over towards my shadowy tones. The shadows are going to go on to the right side, just like the mountains, right? So I make a mark for the right side here, where that right side shadow is on those rocks. And then I put in the, the mid-tone, the half-tone, which actually use, is used to give it some shape here. And I can tap that around. You can move that rock down into the grasses and put some grasses and stuff up on top of it but it'll start painting your rock and then i will come back like i'll, I'll mix the two values together a bit and create another little half tone and start adding that maybe i want a little more of a light tone right up here onto this edge here push it back like that but it's three values. It's at least three values. And beautiful rocks will have more. Like you might take and put some greens in it. Like I might take a little bit of a burnt sienna here. And come back with a bit of a burnt sienna tone right in there. And add that into that rock there. And I want to pull some of these tones back down up into the front. That's what I'm really going to be doing. 
maybe a little green into this one here. A little softness there. But this is how you paint your rocks. And you've seen me in all the videos do rocks kind of similar to this. This is how I like to paint them. And I'll add some of those tones around and just kind of, and you may come back and put, you know, rocks on top of grasses and then grasses back up on top of rocks and stuff here. And, uh, you know, try to do them all a little bit different. I have a hard time doing that because I'm a left brain painter. So I have a hard time sometimes painting rocks because I want to make them all the same here. So I'll start adding some halftone shadows. So see, sometimes I'll put on the light, then the halftone, and uh, then I'll come back and uh, put in a little deeper tone, maybe onto the shadowed edge of it. Come back to the light tone. I want to express that light side again one more time here. So very fun that way. So I'm going to build little grasses and little things on here and paint the rocks just like this. This is going to take me a bit to work through here, maybe about an hour. I figured a painting like this, depending upon how much work I put into rocks and all that kind of stuff, usually takes me um, about a couple hours, two, three hours. And so we're in good shape. I'm going to divide this up a bit here. Make a slightly different little rock here. So I'll come, I'll, I'll just work on this and then I'll come back and give you some final thoughts, but you get a good impression right there through, uh, through your landscape, don't you? So, and it's what, we're an hour and 30 minutes into this. So I always figure between two and three hours. So if I work on this, won't be an hour, but if I work on this, we're in good shape. And it's the combination of all this stuff that makes it go faster. And, you know, look, I, and this is the one thing I want to say to you that, you know, I painted, you got to have your hands like that. I painted for so many years, guys, and I would just work my heck, the heck off of my brushes, you know, trying to get, and now it's like, I just give the impression. You all see these as trees and you'll see all of that movement and stuff like that as trees. And, uh, you know, and I found that less is more and the, the you know, the, uh, the less I painted on it and more impressionistic I painted on it, the better it actually looked. So you might want to come in just and, and, you know, tap in some rocks around in some of these areas here and then just go add some shadows and lights and have yourself some fun. We'll paint up some bigger ones up over here and just keep going. Go fast, okay? And... I'm just going to work on this, and then uh, we'll come back and I'll give you some final thoughts working through it, okay? All right, see you in a minute. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. Well, I worked on it for about 30 minutes or so, and so what I did was I ended up, you know, adding some verticals and then some horizontals uh, into here with the grasses and then using that, uh, which I had right here, all full of loaded little paint and just come in and just tap little uh, highlights of grasses. Sometimes go up over the edge of like the water or something like that. Just tap a few of them around and they will give that little spark that I like to add, you know, to the paintings all through here. Um, the rocks, again, I painted and tried to vary some of them. I could put some back up over here, but I don't think I will. I'll let it go more towards the grasses. As a matter of fact, I could probably put some smoother transition of grasses. And I found when I worked the larger area of grasses, I really liked my three-quarter inch here and just dragging through uh, this just like that and then pull in some verticals. And just like I show you in the westerns, some really great ways to do it is to tap through with the paper towel. Those just, you know, I show those in the prairie grasses of the westerns all the time and some of the wildlife ones. And it works really, really well is what I like to do. Um, then I added, a, I, I went back through here and added again and added the the reflection of this hill right here. Could go maybe a little bit heavier, um, but I do like that reflection. Now, what I, what I had to do, though, was use a hairdryer on it for a second to dry it up and set it because I added that little bit too much. It was too slippery. 
added too much of that open medium. It stayed wet for too long. So I just, I just dried it up and then put a light coat of extender, just real light coat of extender on it, and then pulled it again. And because it has that underneath, I didn't have to do very much. I just went in and added a few little things here and there. And uh, I like the way it looks. I don't want to pull the, the deep down reflections quite as long as what you see on that one there because I, f I felt they were a little distracting. So I softened them off a little bit. Now you can also... You know, what a lot of landscape painters do is you add wind waves on that. Um, and what what you can do really easy with that is just take some of your light right here towards the end. And you can add, you know, little bits of little marks of colors through, you know, here like this. That, that would add wind waves and stuff like that to it. If you want to do that, that's up to you. Um, you know, some of them will, as you pull down, you do a little stutter like this, and that gives a little stutter. There's not much uh, on that particular one there. There is some uh, the, uh, of a violet kind of shadow kind of color up here towards the front. And again, this is all up to you, whether you want to do something like that. Add some of those, you know, wind wave kind of things right up here towards the front. Add some of that horizontal other types of movement here where it's not quite so smooth here we'll just add some of the shadow and stuff in here and where it's not quite so smooth and you can add some of those waves and stuff in there that is up to you uh you know i like it uh, a little bit softer so you know i won't have quite as much of that in there so i'll soften some of that out and, um, you know, but I will have a little bit of it. So I'll take a final photo when I'm at it and I'll add some of that in. Uh, this is still a little tender from the second time I did it. So if you have anything that gets tender and you start to pull any kind of hole, stop, dry it. And I should dry that and then I'll just come back. And it works great putting the next layer right onto that. Don't try to fight with it. Um, you know, it's, it uh, when it starts to dry up, it you know when the acrylic starts to dry up and you start to maybe pull a little hole or something like that or rolls stop dry it come back put on a light coat extender do it again it works really really easy okay don't get frustrated with it dry it the hair dryer to acrylics is your friend drying it is your friend okay alrighty so there you go so put that in and got some shadows in here I like it overall I like the painting I don't think I'm going to put more into the rocks because I like how it pulls you in right in here I pull you into the you notice the shadows and stuff through here but I like it I could go a little heavier like that one the photo that's up there but I like how it pulls you in and uh, I might lighten the sky here just a little bit more I'm going to take a I'm going to, um, you know, overall this took me about 30 minutes there, so it's a two-hour painting. Um, I'm going to put it aside here, go have some lunch, and because uh, it is now 12.19, time for lunch. And uh, I will uh, go have some lunch, and I'll come back, and I'll look at it again, okay? And uh, so if you like the painting, make sure you click subscribe down there, and uh, make sure you hit that little bell so that... Uh, you can be notified when there's a new, you know, painting out. And because I try to release one to two a week is what I try to do. The next up was going to be that floral still life. And I'm going to go back to study a, an Ann Cotterell with you. I know we still want to do that couchoir. I promise you that couchoir. We will paint that big floral couchoir with you. We'll do that together as a full lesson. Uh, but I wanted to show you a quicker little Ann Cotterell in, a, in an earth, some roses in it and, and open peonies and stuff in a, in a uh, earthen vase really nice technique. I love Ann Cotterell's stuff. Um, and uh, she, she was just amazing. But uh, so we'll do that. And then we'll go to the seascape. I have a beautiful seascape that I want to paint with you. And then we'll go back and uh, look at a wildlife. I have another wildlife from up in the Rocky Mountains. And uh, then we will do a, uh, a Western again. Okay. And so lots of stuff to paint. Oh, I got to do a bird again with you guys too. So lots of stuff to do. And we're going to continue on. Don't forget if you want to revisit some of the beginning channels, uh, you know, go back over to paint it simply. Okay. Go over there. And yesterday I uploaded a really important video on understanding the drying times of acrylics and how to blend with acrylics. Okay. 
So go take a look at that video because it is really important for you to start to understand. See, that's one of the advantages, guys, that I have over you is I'm the chemist behind this paint. I know how it feels. I know how to make it last longer, how to dry. How to, I know how to do all of that stuff. So I got to teach you some of that stuff. And some of that stuff that I teach you is really boring because I know you want to get in there and paint. But it's just like understanding how a car works push the gas it goes without gas it doesn't go in you know just like the paint you know I can add extender to it and when does that extender go off and when that extender you know when that paint starts to dry to a certain percent that extender won't work anymore and you have to switch to water and I explained that in that video so you know I I got to get you to understand some of these these a little bit of the chemistry behind it so that you can understand what's happening with your acrylics and how you can work them more effective because they are so versatile, okay? Alrighty? All right. So don't forget to go over to our Paint It Simply channel and watch that new one that went up uh, on that uh, yesterday. So you'll, I think you'll enjoy it, okay? Alrighty. Thanks very much, guys, and I'll see you right back here on the, on the next one in just a couple days. Bye-bye.